Yay, good morning. Good morning, Paul Kiker. Good morning. I love when Paul Kiker's here. He is my go-to person for anything that's happening in the world because you're up to date, up to everything, watching this and that, and duh, so much is going on, Paul. So much is going on. A lot on. is going on. It's hard to keep up with. As a realtor, I see some craziness happening. Um, I see people coming with a lot of cash and buying properties. As a you know, a, a person who survived that last downturn, mm -hmm. I'm watching everything, and I understand some of the Fairbairns' loans have now been called, and you okay. are not given the opportunity to stay in your house without paying, so we've seen some foreclosures. Are you seeing any of that? No, actually, I, I haven't. I don't, I don't see a lot on that side, because usually by the time they get there, they're not, I'm not connected with them. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it in the data, but I'm not seeing it with individuals around here right now. How do you feel when Holly goes to the grocery store and comes home and says, Paul, <laughs> can you call the bank and see if we can get a loan? Because I just bought a buggy full of groceries. No, kid. <laughs> we were talking about that the other day. So, you know, two, two of the kids are out of the house now. Katie gets married next weekend. So she's kind of quiet. That is just out. so weird. She's just so, gosh, she's going to be gone. That she's going to so, be gone, but oh, she's got well, a job. So that's a good well, thing. That's Starts good. in, in uh, August. But, uh, but yeah, so everybody so we had eight people up last weekend in the little bitty place mm -hmm. that we're in memorial day we yeah. went, and holly went and bought groceries and she was like my goodness this is worse than the house payment yes and, yes and everywhere i go the, the majority of the conversations i'm having with everybody even clients that we serve people that we run into is just how dramatic it's crazy uh, uh food prices yeah have been. it's crazy it's absolutely crazy, and um, we have seen, you know, everybody was screaming about the crisis of the baby formula. I don't know how that happened, because when I was raising kids, we did carnation milk, can of carnation milk, can of water, and a little bit of caro syrup. That's what you gave your babies. Right. And now these people are panicking all over the world because they don't have baby formula. Okay. And they don't Babies know. were fed long before there was baby formula. Well, and but it, there's been a crisis and a panic over it. And, th and that's been a convenience that we've had sure. in today's society. Sure. And nobody knows how to do it the way that they used to. Can of carnation, can of water, a little, little yeah, carrot I mean, syrup. <laughs> our system's set up to rely on the corporation. So yes, it our is. Schools, you know, used to you'd have a home ec. Uh, class in high school, and I, I don't know if they have it now or not. But Boy, I would they assume need they, it. They I would need assume it. they don't teach the kids how to do traditional mixtures to make sure babies are okay. Yeah, and and it is it is so weird to me because I saw panic, and I was like, y'all are panicking over baby formula. Right. Okay, um, there are a lot of things to panic over, and one of the things that happened since I've seen you, the shooting in Texas. Yes. Um, you're an avid gun collector. I think we have the right to bear arms. I believe that we should all carry to protect ourselves and there are some screaming if he couldn't have gotten a gun if he couldn't if he had gotten some mental help for his mental condition because he had to have a mental condition to do what he did there are 10 things that could have been wrong that, well, that were we have a nation we have a mental health crisis in our nation. absolutely and you know there's several factors that goes into it uh, you know people people could use a car Yes, guns, but, but you don't remove guns from society. That's mm -mm, the one thing mm -mm. That, that allows us to protect ourselves. And yeah, we can't protect ourselves from the government necessarily if they come after us with all of the technology that they have. But if the entire nation rose up against an evil government, mm -hmm. they're still going to be able to overturn. So it's, an in, it's incredibly important for us to have the ability to keep our firearms. Absolutely. But there are so many issues, you know. Nine, ten thousand dollars. Now he used assault rifles. Is uh, that you know, correct? I don't know exactly what he. They used. said they were like twenty five hundred dollar guns. So I don't know what. A, and and number one, where does an eighteen year old kid who's unemployed get twenty five hundred dollars to buy guns? Yeah. So I, I saw a guy that went through and talked about what guns he used. I didn't take the guns to memory mm -hmm. because it could have been any gun. It could yeah. be shotguns. I mean, yeah, it's high capacity. It could be you know you can learn to load low capacity guns very fast. Uh, but nine to ten thousand dollars is what they came up that he put in there. That, that was the total cost between ammo, clips, wow. guns, everything that he had. Where did that kid get $10,000? So that's a good question, you know. That's a good question. Was it, it a grandmother it, that he killed first? From what I understand. I don't know much about the details. So maybe did he steal from her? Or I don't, I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. My 18-year-olds couldn't have come up with $10,000. Because they'd know, have had to come to mom and ask for it. You know, what was tragic <laughs> was, was police not going in. Oh, my God. 
It's so sad. There was a report so that he sad. was shooting outside for 12 minutes. Even Holly and I talked about it. One thing about our school system here, they've done a very good job mm -hmm. of if anything comes over the radio, from what I understand, lock school down. Yeah. So, so. And what about the person who left the door open? Job. That I don't know anything about. Oh gosh. They said the person went out to retrieve a cell phone and left it unlocked, and then when she or left it open, and when she came in, she closed it but forgot to lock it. Yeah. And that, to me, that is wide open for huge penalties and possible prosecution. Well, in the midst of a crisis like that, it's we, sad. We, we've got to have mercy for people yeah. that panic yeah. and they don't make decisions. So, I mean, they don't Crazy. make good decisions. And how do you get make good decisions? None of us have, hopefully will ever be in that situation. Gosh. Unfortunately, there are a few people, but you know, there's technologies out there. And, and as Holly was talking to me about the school system is here. Is she still working? She is. Okay, if she's in the school and an active shooter comes, can she mash a button that locks the school down? Yeah, so from what I understand, you know, if something happens, they're, they, they carry a, 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 the ability, I don't know if I'm supposed to lay out what it is or not, we've never talked about right. that. Didn't know yeah. we were gonna talk okay. about this. Okay. But, but the school system can be locked down. So the entire school system is locked down. So it doesn't leave it to one person that mm -hmm. in the midst of panic can mm -hmm. accidentally- What if you can't find that one can person? Can accidentally forget to lock the door. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, um, you know, that, that I can understand. What I can't understand is law enforcement, if, if the reports are true, not breaching the school and not going oh into God. the school. Break and, the windows, do something. And from what I understand, I mean, there were reports that they tased a parent trying to get in. I mean, I told Holly, yeah. I said, oh, yeah. I said, if it I was can my see kids Paul Kiker trying to get in. <laughs> You'd have gotten in. I mean, I would have, I would have clearly looked at the sheriff, and, uh, you know, the the deputy that was sitting there and said, look, I'm going in one way or another, and I'll either You'll go have to kill me. I'm going yeah. through you, or I'm, I'm if I have or to you take go you with out, me. if I have to take you out to get in, I will. Mm -hmm or you're gonna to have to kill me to keep me from going mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that unfortunately- I did not understand any of that. You're wearing bulletproof vests, you've got the training, you've got the equipment. You know, look, and that's one of those things, if there's an exchange with the, and, and God forbid an innocent bystander is mm -hmm. taken down, you, you know, killed in the crossfire, mm -hmm. if you save 10 for one. Absolutely, you know, that's, absolutely. That's, that's not a decision we want to make, but that's a decision that has to be made. Have you seen the commercial or the infomercial that Frank Reynolds, our Cherokee County Sheriff, did last year, long before this shooting? No. He did, and he, he tells his officers, you go in, you go in. You don't you stand in. and ask questions, you don't no. wait, you don't, wait for backup, you go yeah. in. And, and I've, I've watched it over and over and I'm like, okay, this is the most awesome thing I've ever seen because there are no questions to be asked. You get in there and you do it. And uh, I don't, well, I did, don't understand. Did you see the post of the video where the, the Uvalde right police department, they're sitting there with their, their assault rifles and their gear on and they're looking mm -hmm. all bad. You know, doing like, like we're going to do something. Doing nothing. But it's all image. And, mm -hmm. and it, apparently it's all, and I don't know the whole story, right? Well, so, but I know I, but that what I do not there was a time frame that shouldn't have been. There is no excuse for mm -hmm. a deputy not going in there. Mm -hmm. You're in the wrong line of duty. Find somebody that'll go in. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so not a one of them should have their job. That entire no, no. Uh, department should be purged. Well, anybody was there. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, I, I talked about this when it first happened. I freeze in a time of crisis. Right. I've been in a time of crisis where we were broken into and I froze. At the same time, I was working for a jeweler who we were robbed like multiple times and he would just kill him right there in the showroom. And yeah. I'm like, I wish I could be like Bob Jordan because he would just pull his gun and blow him up in the middle of our showroom. And I'm like, another, another bites of dust. Well, you, 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 have <laughs> so, to, you have to be mentally prepared for that. So yeah. I, I've done a lot of training in the past and a lot of the training is psychological. And I had an incident in the Walmart parking lot in LJ. And it was interesting after it was over, I, I explained to, to Sheriff Nicholson, I saw him in town and I told him, he's like, Paul, why didn't you get the license plate number? I should know that, yes, but when the car yes. drove off, but I remember, anyway, long story short, without telling the whole thing, I was loading up, three guys basically dropped somebody off, tried to circle me up in the parking lot. This was, this was 2010, 2011. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I happened to see them walk across. I thought that was weird when they came by, they were looking at me and I was a full suit. I didn't have my pistol on me at the time, but I reached in the truck, put it in my pocket. 
So as he comes up with the other two guys beside me in the car. I'd have already been broke out in cold sweat and nervous wreck. Well, froze. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing was I had done enough training at the time that that when I realized the guy was coming to, he was trying to sneak up on me, I turned. I put my hand on the weapon and I pointed at him. And I said, don't take another step. And I'm thinking, okay, how can I get out of this situation? I couldn't run to the door. And I honestly didn't know. Was it day or night? It was uh, right after dark. Okay. I had gotten talk, caught in conversation inside, and that was back when they would lock down one side of Walmart. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I was parked on that side, so I had to come out the other door and walk all the way across, and mm -hmm. I was by myself on that side. I bet I'd been in there an hour and a half talking to people. Mm -hmm. I get in trouble a lot for that. Yeah. Used to. Now I don't know anybody. <laughs> you go into Walmart now, I don't know anybody. I know. <laughs> So anyway, I pointed at him, and in one of the training it says, you can get yourself out of the situation by confidently saying that you're going to do something. I'd already made the decision. I can't outrun these three guys. I've got my weapon on me. I could fight them. I'd be willing to fight them, but I have my weapon on me, so I can't take a chance if they're going to try to rob me, to them take it from me. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I don't know what the law is, but I can argue that. Mm -hmm. I did find out what the law was after that. Yeah, yeah. So I pointed at him. I said, I, said, I will shoot you. And uh, he looked at me and he took another step and I just lifted it. I said, I will shoot you. There's three of you and one of me. It's justified. And uh, wow. actually, I didn't say it's justified. I just said there's three of you and one of me. And, uh, and he backed up, put his hands up, walked around, got in the car and left. And I was like, oh, my God. It's like, Lord, thank you. Yeah. One, that I didn't have to do that Scary. because I didn't know what the, yeah. you know, I didn't know if I was right. But mm -hmm. those three would have overpowered me. You know, and you got to think, if you show a weapon to somebody and they still have the courage to come, but you know what's interesting is um, in some of the training, and they had caught a guy that had was notorious for breaking into homes and, and killing people to rob them. He knew wow. they were home. And he said, he said, look, if I break into your house in the middle of the night, he said, most people are nice. They're going to hesitate. He said, I just walk in the door, let them come out, and I shoot them right, you know, shoot them because they're going to hesitate. And he said, you know, so so really, you have to be mentally prepared. And yeah. if, if you are a, a store owner and you're in that situation and somebody walks in with a gun, you can't hesitate. You can't pull that gun unless you're willing to use it mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, they're not a toy to flash around. But you look at the data. You look at Chicago. It's a nightmare. Oh, yeah. You know, sure, there's the possibility that, that somebody might, you know, use that weapon if teachers are armed. Mm -hmm. in an irresponsible manner. And sure, somebody might lose a life, and that is tragic. But on one hand, you've got the government telling us that ma uh, va uh, vaccines are mandated because one life matters, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yet yet um, you can't put a gun in the school because all of a sudden, but, so it's not a, a, a protection and freedom thing. This mm -hmm. is about government control. This is about disarming the populace. This is about those that are in power wanting to have power over mm -hmm. us and the one hurdle that they have for America to turn us into more sheeple than we are is to get the guns out of the way. Yeah. And then you've got Beto O'Rourke that shows up out there at the Oh, uh, choke that man. And turns it into a political Choke that man, oh my but gosh. But the problem is is that there are people that are, that are, that are foolish. They think, they're, they think they're doing the right thing and they support him for acts of, of political uh, lack of integrity. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it's mm -hmm. all an agenda, and mm -hmm. America's going to have to wake up. You know, I told you years ago, probably five years ago, that I didn't think Americans had had, 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 had enough pain yet to mm -hmm. change. I think we have now. <laughs> I, don't know. I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there. I think we're getting, I think we're getting there. there. But I mean, yeah, taking taking weapons. Gas is, is thing, higher. So. You think about this. We were in the trucking business in the Jimmy Carter era. Yes. And we had trucks parked all over the nation that we couldn't get fuel for. Fuel was only fifty-seven nine, but we couldn't get fuel. We couldn't get any fuel. It wasn't that we couldn't afford the fuel. We couldn't get any fuel. Right. And we are in a position now. They were interviewing people on the news. If you're making even $14 an hour and you work 40 hours a week and you're paying $6 a gallon for gas, you can't live. You can't pay rent. You can't pay your house payment. You can't buy groceries. You got to have something's got to give. 
something's got to give. Well, I mean, I mean, this administ- have you seen traffic die down any with all these fuel prices? You know, I, surprisingly, not. I have. No, have you? no, not at all. No, not at all. But but we're in a we're very- biting the bullet and we're doing it, but we can't keep doing it. We can't keep doing this. Well, you look, Americans are using their credit cards more now than they have been in the past. Yeah, so, not this. So one. that Mm-mm. you know, they're hoping that this is going to pass, and they're putting it on on their credit cards. Credit card balances are going up. Not a good sign. Not a good sign. But this administration told you when they were elected. Exactly what he was going to do. Before they elected. He's lived after his promises. Exactly <laughs> what they wanted, what they were going to do. This is, oh. this is policies and nothing more. That's this it. is policies That's and nothing it. more. And we've capped off, you know, it's like, for example, the press secretary. I, I don't know how the press secretary does their job. I've never seen such open lying in my life. <laughs> tell you maybe, maybe it's almost a comedy show maybe it maybe, really is it, well and the worst part is is you know exactly what they're going to do that they they've laid their cards out on the table that you know exactly what they're going to say no matter what happens yeah. yeah but you know they're talking about well it's you know we're issuing permits but they're not but then they turn around and cancel the permits on you know in a, an area in alaska and look i'm all for shifting but nuclear nuclear power is a great alternative but we're we're shutting down nuclear plants around mm-hmm. the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, great, let's move to renewable energy, but let's do it in a reasonable guideline instead of you know trying to to do the impossible. I mean, a lot of our a lot of the analysts are coming out and saying if we follow this ESG guideline by 2024, 2025, we're going to have shortages in in a lot of our basic materials just to meet those guidelines. So mm-hmm. what they're they're pushing for something that is unreasonable and unachievable, and the average American is going to pay the price. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be the top 5%. It's not going to be the top 10%. It's going to be the other 80 or 90%. Yep, working man. And the middle class, the upper middle class may think, hey, I'm sheltered from this. I'm going to be fine. It is coming for you. This is going to be, it's going to be a vacuum that sucks from the bottom up is what it's going to be. You might be the last one standing, Mm -hmm. but there will be very few unscathed with what's coming in the years ahead unless we recognize the path that we're headed down as Americans. We wake up and we forget this ridiculous, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. They're driving wedges between us so that they can control us or stay in power and stay in position. We have to come together as an American people. I want to ask you something. We had a discussion yesterday <clears throat> between doctor's visits where we discussed a lot of stuff, but I, um, when we went to vote, it was like Republican, Democrat, and realizing it was the Republican primary, mm-hmm. but a lot of Democrats were voting. Are they voting to place who they want in place to capture the next election? Is that what we're doing? Are we are we manipulating things? Because so let me understand that. So Democrats okay, if registered the Democrat as Republican voted in the Republican primary to control the Republican primary because they know that the weakest link goes up against the next Democrat right. going to office as the governor is what I'm thinking. Well, I, I would, So I would why were so that. many Democrats at the Republican primary? That's because a, the, the numbers were even because we saw the stack of ballots. Oh, that's a good and question. And that's very interesting to me and I didn't even think about that when we were discussing it yesterday and I thought, wow, wow, is that another control factor? that they're going to control even who, everybody knows I'm a Republican. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a conservative, Christian, non-drinking, non-smoking, cuss a little, <laughs> and lately cuss a lot. <laughs> I've had some crazy stuff going on. But I just, darn it, you know, you look at, I want it to be good again. Yeah. You know, we had some good years. We've had some good times. We've had some comfort levels that nobody was panicking. And right, right. now, I see moms panicking. They're paying way too much for childcare. I, I met a lady the other day who pays $1,700 a month for two children's daycare. Now you think about that. That's more than a house payment. That's actually more than a house payment and two of our car payments when we were buying that brick ranch years ago. So think about that. That's more than the house payment and more than two car payments for her to have her children in daycare so she can work. Are you kidding me? Well, and there's no reason for it. How can you do that? Okay, so drive through Atlanta. Next time, don't want to. Next time you go (laughs) through, ain't going to. (laughs) Next time you go through Atlanta, I want you to pay attention to the billboards, 
And there you know, was, I haven't been to Atlanta in two years, we, two and well, a half years. We've not been to Milledgeville to visit my in-laws since December, but because of our project. But we normally go through there a lot. But in, but look at the billboards around. Even in communities, you go through it'll tell you what's the most profitable section within the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, and an analyst pointed this out to me about, well, in his research report, pointed out about 15 years ago, and I've always remembered it. He says, when you drive through a major metropolitan area, he says, look at the billboards because those are the most expensive. You'll find out who's the most profitable. Wow. Wow. Okay. Interesting. So in Atlanta, it's nothing but ambulance chasing attorneys. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see that. I see that even in Cobb County. Yeah. So, yeah. So the problem is government regulation has come in and the government's tried to control everything. Mm -hmm. So the regulation on child care uh, centers is so high that their cost of doing business and the risk of doing it's business ridiculous. is yeah. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Because you're going to get sued. And we've got to get all this government regulation out and we have to understand, you know what, life is messy and life happens. You do your best, right? You trust that the Lord is there and for negligence, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, I don't know what happens in the lawsuits of that area, but I do know that most of our industries have regulation that are causing all kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's a big topic. Several business owners, Christian business owners got together, I guess it was about uh, six, seven months ago, and Jasper, we, we got together and started talking about how can we help our community. Mm -hmm. And the biggest topic, the biggest problem with some of the larger businesses that had, had multiple, you know, 30, 20, 30 employees, employees yeah. was childcare. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they, you know, one of the business owners had done the research to go in and says, look, could we start a child care facility and just make it nonprofit? Yeah. And yeah. he's like, there's no way it'll be profitable with the, with the regulations. Insurance and regulations. So what happens yeah. is you have the few here that are, that are able to survive and they're barely getting by. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. nobody else can afford to open. Right, right. It's ridiculous. Right. Yeah. It's another yeah. part it's of crazy. our economy being It's crazy. Well, we're going to, today, I want to celebrate Ella J. Ball Ground, Jasper, all these mountain towns are open for business. Yes. We're open for business and we're welcoming people in. And we like our lifestyle. We like the little mm -hmm. circle that you drive around in Ella J. We like the little town area. I walk in downtown Ball Ground. And last night I walked up to the office and I stayed an hour and a half or so getting some stuff done. Then I walked home. And I'm thinking as I'm walking, I've just been on a jury where there was an armed robbery and I might say he got life plus 25 years. And I'm looking around me and I'm thinking how blessed I am to live in this amazing tiny town of Ballground. Mm -hmm. How blessed I am to work in this tiny town of LJ. How blessed I am to go visit in Fannin County, to go to Turtle Town, to go to mm -hmm. McKaysville. We are still so beyond blessed when you look at the whole world. Yes. How do we stop? We want growth, but we want control growth. How do we stop crime from taking over our small towns? Because that's what's wrong with the big cities. It's the mm -hmm. crime rate. It's, it's everything. The crime rate drives up everything. The crime rate drives up how you arm your house, how you put up. Uh, go through some of the areas where I grew up in, and they have these burglar bars on everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pitiful. How do we maintain our wonderful lifestyle here in LJ, here in Ballground, here in Fannin County, and keep the crime down and still bring in the growth? Because we do need growth. We need yes. people to buy houses. We need people to open new businesses. We need people to come in here and care about the community and become a part of the community. But what do we do to stop crime from coming? How do we do that? That's a good question. That's a part, I mean, it, it, it's a part of society and the- We've had some drug deals 515 and, and congratulations to all the all the cops around are getting, I don't know how they zone in on them, but they're getting some of the drug dealers. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful for that. There's been a big bust in Pickens County, been a, a, I think there was a wreck up here, there were a lot of drugs involved. Uh, a lot of things are going on. And once again, drugs and money are controlling mm -hmm. things. Yeah. How do we stop that? We've been trying to stop it for 40 years and we can't stop it. So what good, do we do to, so, to maintain our lifestyle here? It's a good question. I think if, if, if we as a society really wanted to go after drugs, it could be stopped. 
we you're, not do stop, something. you're not going to stop it completely, but it could be limited dramatically, and that's a, a whole another topic to get into because when the government gets into the war on drugs, now we're very fortunate in our local area. You've seen American Made. Yeah. 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 So a true movie. Yeah, we a true movie. We can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a whole. We. I don't know if I want to go down that rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah. 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 But. Uh, <laughs> But we're very blessed with our local law enforcement. Absolutely. So absolutely, and, and they're doing a great job getting some of the drug dealers. And I don't know how they're doing it because they get them on five fifteen. They get yeah. them, you know, they get them in different areas. They're good. They're getting them. Yeah. They're good. They're getting them. I'm sure a lot of these drug dealers are good, but our guys are good, and yeah. they care. Yeah. They care enough to put effort into protecting the community, and we are blessed for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We really are. Our law enforcement around here is. We're blessed for that. And I might say, if you go to Cobb County, DeKalb County, all those other places, the pay is so much higher than we're mm -hmm. paying our local officers from Cherokee County to Fannin County. None of them have the budgets that the big cities have, mm -hmm. but then they also afford a better lifestyle to be a police officer here. Right. So, But we're going to share, and I don't know if you've ever heard this, because I hadn't until about six weeks ago, and I felt really stupid. We're going to share a song about Ella J. And we're just going to do a commercial break. And then Paul and I are going to come back, and he's going to tell us everything's wrong with the economy. God help us. God <laughs> help us. Talk about all the wrong stuff. But when, when we think about how blessed we are to be in this city, when I leave here today, I have a meeting over at Kusawati. Okay, they're not from around here. They're not mm -hmm. from around here, but they love the lifestyle here. This morning, I was dealing with local people. They love the lifestyle here. We all love the lifestyle. We want to protect it. So. I want to challenge y'all to get out and look around and, and find something you can do to make these communities that we serve better, whether it be a member of the Garden Club down in uh, Ball Ground, and thank you to everybody last night. I took this big peach cobbler to the event and it was scarfed down about 10 minutes. But, but all the communities have wonderful people who have either come in here and chose to live here or people who've been here all their lives and want to maintain that great lifestyle. Do you remember the pool room and the great chili yes, dogs? Yes, I do. Oh my goodness, you know, why did we lose that? We, we've lost some important things. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important now that we stop and we don't lose anything else and we maintain what we have and we really protect these communities. So we're gonna share a song about Ella J back in the olden days and we're gonna do a commercial break and when we come back, Paul's going to be in charge for the next 30 minutes and Lord knows what he'll, I hope he'll give me some advice that I can live by because I see the economy doing some weird stuff right now. So, so yeah. sit back and enjoy a little bit of local LJ music.
late in the evening when the sun goes down you can drive through and hear the happy sounds of the folks in L.J. Now way back in the summer of 73 the red dot parking lot was the place to be but you could get more than what you bargained for back in those days in Ella J. Yeah, you could. <laughs> Ella J. A mighty fine place to be. Ella J. Good enough for you and me. Yeah. 69 Road Runner Charger RT. Pistol grip four speed 380. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. High-speed Wi-Fi. 
not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Okay, Paul Kiker, the world, you're not going to take our guns. Leave no. us alone. We're going to protect our right to bear arms. We're going to do that. We're going to maintain our great lifestyle. When you think about these small towns, they are filled with people from everywhere. Yes. Um, you, doing what you do for a living, have had a lot of folks who came here with their 401k. You've had a lot of people oh, yeah. who were at retirement age when you met them. I probably actually worked the larger majority are move-ins to the community. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. I have people, locals that I work with, but, but the larger majority are move-ins. And um, so, so yeah, I, I actually have a pretty awesome footprint of the Gilmer County, Pickens County, Blue Ridge, even North Cherokee County mm -hmm. group of clientele that I work with. So I get to see, uh, I get to hear both sides of the story. Right, right. Now, I can remember, um, a lot of people came out of the Chicago area and retired to Big Canoe. Mm -hmm. A lot of people from Chicago, I don't know how they found us, but they did. Some of the nicest folks I ever met. Right. And um, they came here because they liked our lifestyle. They came here and they brought X amount of dollars thinking mm -hmm. they would maintain their lifestyle their whole life. Are they outliving their money or is the money working? So it depends on the circumstances. <laughs> a lot of people that, that had a minimal margin for error who retired back in the year 2000, if they weren't, that's 22 years. I know. If they, that's 22 years of living on that. If they weren't running a risk managed portfolio, they got hit in the 2000 decline, they got hit in the 2008 decline, they didn't make any money for 14 years in the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. They had CDs that were paying 7%, <coughs> bonds that were paying 7% in 2000 to 2005 that reset to 1% to 3% now. Mm -hmm. Inflation's been higher, it's been the perfect storm. So it's been by God's grace if you retired in the year 2000 that you didn't kind of run out of money. Because let's right. say you had a million dollar portfolio in 2000, you're drawing 5% a year. For 10 years, you know, that's, 50, broke. that's 50 yeah. grand. Yeah. In 10 years, uh, uh, you've drawn 500,000 out plus the market drop. Then another four years before the S&P 500 made money, it was flat from 2000, 2014, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, there's been a lot of people that have had to do some some very tough strategic planning I think that's one of the reasons why the government's printed so much money and just tried to prop asset prices up so much. Uh, and they've been able to get away with it until inflation came along. You know how I can tell that people have run out of money? How's that? You've been to Walmart lately? Yeah, but I don't pay Go attention. Go look at the employees at Walmart. Oh, They're yes, over 70. Yes, They're yes. over 70. They're not at work because they want to be. Well, <clears throat> some of them like being out among the public, right. but some of them are there to put food on their table. Yeah, it's hard to gauge though, because I have, a, I mean, there, there are people that I've counseled that, that will leave their corporate a little early. Health insurance is a big deal, mm -hmm. or they, they need to supplement their income so they'll go work, or they choose to work because they drive themselves crazy sitting mm -hmm, at home. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard well, to Well, I told you that. I, I mean, if, if you said, okay, you just have to sit in the box. I'd be right. nuts. I'd be right. nuts. I've got to be morning, noon, and night, active, busy, crazy, stressed to the max to live my lifestyle. Right. Because that's just me. We're geared differently, I yeah, guess. Yeah, uh, Holly and Some I. Some people can't wait to retire and sit on the porch. No. Mm -mm. Holly, right. Holly mm -hmm. and I talk about it a lot. She's like, when are you going to retire? <laughs> I'm like, well, my plan is to be able to retire at 65. You know, I'm, I, I want to be in a position to be able to do that so that if my health doesn't allow, that I don't have to go to work. Mm -hmm. I said, but I don't want to retire. Like I like my clients. I'll quit. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll quit taking new people. I can't say I'd fire anybody right now because I don't have any jerks that I'm working with. I, I'm very <laughs> I <love> fortunate. It. <laughs> but, um, uh, so, 
so you know, I mean, they, they end up being family, and I, I can't not do something. Mm -hmm, I can't mm -hmm. not do yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. That's now. What about Holly? How many years that she got in? Well, mm, that's a good question. Sixty-two. So Holly's going to be forty-nine this year. So she's got a while. Birthday. Thirteen, fourteen she's 49 years now. Forty-nine now. She'll be fifty at her next birthday. So she's she's got twelve more years. Mm -hmm. So that period of time that she stayed at home with the kids, she's got to fill in that gap, and. Um, so that'll be the point where she can get her full benefits and mm -hmm, be able mm -hmm. to retire. Yep, yep. And is she a stay-at-home person? If it comes to retirement, would she find something else to do? Oh, she'll be busy, you know, <coughs> gardening and working in mm -hmm. the yard and, you know, staying in, in connection with the kids. She, she enjoys that. She's yep. not the type to, to sit around and do nothing. Um, I'm the type that's adventure here. Let's go there. Yeah, you know, yeah. I want to be on the tractor. Fishing on the weekend, and hunting. Fishing. And yes. I just want to be outside. I'm inside yeah. all day long. Yeah, yeah. So I want to be outside when the weekend comes. Yeah, it's like yeah. daylight. I cannot wait to get outside. Yeah. I used to feel bad when I went to town because I'd have mud all over me and be on the tractor. Uh, Y'all, I wish something. I had a picture of his truck out here in the parking oh my lot. Gosh, I pulled terrible. up today and I thought, Oh my gosh, there's <laughs> nothing about your truck that's not covered in mud. No. Where have you been? So the new project that we're in, the loggers <laughs> have been out there for nearly a year now. And uh, I think we've, they've got three more weeks because they've been cutting property around. It's so funny, I pulled up timber. and I thought, duh. <laughs> so I can't put gravel on our road. And it's, it's rained so much there for a period of time, I finally just gave up on washing it. Like, I've got clients that'll text me, they're like, my gosh, when are you going to clean your truck? And I'm like, well, as soon as I don't have to wash it every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's pitiful, like it drives wow. me crazy. Now, would you once again take the door that you've opened for yourself, new land, barn yes. dominium home, is it a good choice? Absolutely. It's the best decision, it's the best decision that I've made in the past 10 years. Wow, and a, a totally different lifestyle. Completely different. Yeah. But you know, I, I told Holly, so we, di we didn't know that we had a mountain view when we bought the property. We just fell in love with the way the property laid. Mm -hmm. We liked the fact that it had two, How many acres two creeks get? on it. It's right at 70. So <clears> um, so we, we loved the location. It was closer to Holly's school, it was closer to us. And we were heartbroken. We were giving up like living on the lake mm -hmm. in the, in the mm -hmm. house that we raised the kids in. Most of the time we raised, yeah. they were born in another house. But um, so we, we had really debated it for quite some time. And then of course prices just got ridiculous that that, that, was, that was the one thing. I'm like, well, I'm certainly not giving the house away. Yep. And uh, so we figured the best way to deal with this is to downsize. Mm -hmm. um, if we get hyperinflation, really high inflation. I don't know that necessarily material prices come down, but I do think labor prices are going to come down. Mm -hmm. And um, so I said, well, let's downsize. Holly <coughs> said, let's downsize. The kids are going to be out of the house and, and let's just reset. But the, the biggest thing for us was like when, when my in-laws travel up and they spend a lot of time coming to visit mm -hmm. and my mother comes up, my mother can get up and down the steps just fine, but after my father-in-law's vaccine reaction, mm -hmm. I got to look and I'm going to have to spend a ridiculous amount of money to put a guest bedroom on the first floor. Mm -hmm. So let's pull the parachute. Flat. Let's pull the yeah. parachute and go because we and I've wanted more land for quite some time. So you know, I just pinch myself every time I'm out there. I thank God that we're out there now. Now this construct. I mean, we're building two bedroom, one bath, 1,200 square feet. Uh, you know, it's a metal building apartment. Mm -hmm. So I've got a, I've got a large workshop area, which I'm so excited about. Yeah. But this has been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. This is the fourth house I've built, and this isn't really a house. It's a yeah. garage. I mean, I mean it is. Right. But, <clears throat> but just how inefficiently run our economy is. And, I, and I've worked with fantastic contractors, but everybody's pushed to the max. Everybody's stressed. Supply chain shortages. Everything is inefficient. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just that, that money bomb that was dropped on the economy that started under Trump and then you know, and then followed behind it with all this fiscal stimulus and everything that's come by the Biden administration. So the Trump administration got the train of inflation going. Mm -hmm. And it was already going to be bad. And then the Biden administration came on and just threw gasoline on the fire and, 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 and it's kind of out of control. Mm -hmm. It's amazing when we look back just how unbelievably efficiently our global economy was moving. The shutdowns, the lockdowns were the first major mistake. Mm -hmm. 
and it's so foolish and it's so easy. And thank God for Georgia and, and us staying open. We opened up quicker than anybody. Right. I mean, I... Yeah. We took a lot of heat for that. A lot of people, oh, Georgia's crazy. They're doing that. No. We, we put people back to work. Yeah. I mean, we did and our economy is moving along. Sure. And those same people want to be here. Yeah. And they're moving down here. Trust me. They're coming they're, from New England. They're coming from... Uh, Minnesota, they're coming from everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable how yeah. many people are moving in. So, so our, I mean, Governor Kemp did a fantastic job getting through. There's, I mean, there's, you know, me, I'm not, I'm not going 100% for, for any one of them mm -hmm. because there's all issues, but yep. he did a good job keeping us going, and, and, and I'm appreciative of that yep. because, yep. you know, now Atlanta's a different story. I went down not too long ago, and I actually went to see one of my clients, and I didn't know it, but they had a, a pool. They were betting that I wouldn't have a mask on. And, oh, wow. Uh, I walked in to go start meeting with people, and I was like, um, uh, guys, I, I don't even have one with me. And they're like, oh, I want, I want, you know, here it is. And it was, you know, but it's just, it, well, maybe I had to it's go better to a now, doctor. but it was a different world three months ago. Yeah, I had to go to a doctor yesterday, and it's, um, they're, they're out of Piedmont, Atlanta, and they insist on masks. And so, okay, well, my ball ground doctor, you have to wear a mask too. So the doctors are still slamming those masks on you and you're still having to wear them. I can't breathe today because I wore a mask yesterday and I was in a place that I couldn't breathe very well. And it's so weird because the mask protect a certain amount, but we're not sure what they do protect. Right. You know, we don't know, but, but, but some people are still, it's like when I walked in and I didn't have on a mask, I got those looks like you need to have on a mask. And I thought, okay. Well, to play both sides of it, when, you know, my first explanation was, look, if you get a huge viral load, then your body has a harder time fighting it off. Mm -hmm. So really the, the mask isn't going to keep you from getting exposed to the virus, but it's going to reduce that viral load because it's just something to go through to catch a couple, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Some people say it's like mosquitoes flying through a chain link fence. Well, some of those mosquitoes are probably going to hit the chain link fence, but it slows it down long enough. So I, I'm not against those, but I am against the mandates. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I do. Don't my, tell me what to do. You know, I do my Let best. Let me make the decision. Yeah, I do my best not to judge somebody if they're wearing a mask when I see them. I got some looks because I I didn't have a mask with me and I had to ask for a mask. Oh, there's a, there's a lot of judging. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you're yeah. not wearing one, but I, I just yeah. grin. I'm like, yeah. hey, how are yeah. you? Well, and and it's so weird because the lady checking me out, she was beautiful. Oh my God, this girl was so beautiful but you couldn't see her smile because she had on that mask. Yeah. And I thought if she's that gorgeous with her eyes and her little bit short haircut, she was so cute. But I thought, just imagine what her smile would look like. And, and that's something we're missing that. We're missing that. We're missing part of our world. Well, I'll tell you what's interesting, so, and, and how you treat people. So I was on an elevator with somebody, I guess a couple of months ago. Were you masked? No. No. They had the mask on, you could tell. At the courthouse, I wasn't, you, yeah. You could tell it made them uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, we kind of got stuck in there for a period of time, so I just started talking to them, asking them questions, and human nature, they pulled their mask down and started talking to me and didn't even realize it, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, and then they popped it back up, and I thought, good, I made a connection with that person, mm -hmm, so I got mm -hmm. them over, you mm -hmm. know, whatever, they, and I didn't mm -hmm. judge them. I mean, I, they, they, I can certainly understand it. I've, I've, I've had, I'm you know, sitting here thinking, you past. just said two bedroom, one bath? Yeah. Holly, yeah. Holly, honey. <laughs> hey, it was her idea. No, no, you always need two bathrooms. We had a motorhome with two bathrooms in it, for goodness sake. I know. You got to have two bathrooms, Paul. Yeah, I am going to be sharing a bathroom with a 17-year-old boy. Paul, what yeah. were you thinking? Holly, wake up. That, hey, that was, <laughs> that that was crazy. Was, she's so excited about it. So. Oh, that is wild. Hey, it's sacrifices, but yeah. you know, you make sacrifices in life to get where was you want. Was it the budget or the plan? I mean, it wouldn't have cost that much more for a half bath It anyway. was the space. Okay. So, well, it was, it was the plan, really. So mm -hmm. the way Holly laid it out and the way the metal building was designed, we only had so much space this way. And I joked, I'm like, well, we can put it, we can pour a concrete pad outside and put an outhouse out there with another bathroom. She's mm -hmm. like, we don't need that. That's just a waste of money. Yeah. And wow. And she's not thinking like a normal woman. A normal woman is like, I need my bathroom. <laughs> Holly's, Holly's no frills. They invented copper wire pulling a penny out of her hand. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. If yeah. anybody's, you know, and I, I'd, awesome. I'd like to think I'm, you know, I pay attention to value. I can't mm -hmm. say I'm necessarily mm -hmm. tight. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, our goal is within the next two years to build a house, a much smaller house than what we sold, 
but to build a house. And then the in-laws could stay in this place when they come to visit. Yes. yes. Well, no, well uh, actually we can VRBO that oh, or, yeah. oh, or yeah. they could stay there. So the requirements on the new home, as I told Holly, I said, the kid, I want the kids to have a bedroom. They're going to be 11 by 11. Yeah, so they don't stay long. <laughs> so that if they do move back, there's a price to pay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so I'd love for them to have a place if they come back, because it doesn't look like any of our kids are going to live here. And um, In LJ area? No. Really? No, I mean, <clears throat> how can you afford to start out and live here? Okay. I mean, really, I, I, mean, I, I agree I've got that. land now that I can give them if they, if they choose to, but... You know, Kells moved to Milledgeville, and he started construction there. Uh -huh. And uh, he misses it here for sure, but but he's starting his career there. Katie's career, you know, moving to basically Atlanta, Alpharetta area. Right, right. And uh, if Tyler gets into medical school, that we don't know where they're going to be, and will may. I mean, I hope they do. I mean, that, mm -hmm. how much of a blessing would it have to have them all living here? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know what path the Lord has for them. So. Wow. You know, but the only thing we've decided are the size of the bedrooms, and then we want a guest bedroom on the first house mm -hmm. for our for our in laws and mm -hmm. my mom when they come mm -hmm. up, and then that's it. We can't. We know we want it open, but we haven't we haven't settled on anything, mm -hmm. and we're we're so focused on trying to get in here. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's been that hard. <coughs> Did you ever come to the house I had at Hill City? I went by it, but I never went. Well, in. Well, to me is I found the house plan day before yesterday. Perfect house plan because yes. on on the level you're over here and you have your privacy. Your guests are over yes. here, and then you have all the living space in the middle. My aunt designed it, and it's the perfect house plan. Everybody needs a house that, if there were a crisis and your children needed to come mm -hmm. home, if there were a medical issue, yes. and your parents need to come and stay, they need to have a flat, no steps bedroom. Thirty six you know? inch doors, yes. handicap accessible. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Those are there are things that you do to prepare for life. Yes. And uh, with the money issue, with what's happening today, we are finding multi-family living. Because a lot of times if I go list a house, it's because they're moving in with their kids in their kids' finished basement because they've decided you have to capitalize on today's crazy market mm -hmm. and sell your house for top dollar. Did you get top, top dollar for yours? I did. That's, well, I mean, I that's don't know what if matters. it was top, to me it was top, top yeah, dollar. Yeah, that's what matters. It, and and so people are jointly living. I've seen some three generations living in one house now because they've chosen that the younger kids bought a house, but they really couldn't, you know, didn't know what they wanted to do and they bought this house, but they can make 100000 on it. So sure, you sell. And then their parents are selling and then grandma and grandpa happen to have this big house with a finished basement and everybody's going to live there. Yeah. And we're seeing that a lot in real estate. <clears throat> you got multi living. Well, you got you've got so much demand for real estate now because people have convinced themselves. Look at the inventory. Pe pe people don't know history, okay? So you've got institutions now that investors want to have exposure to rental places. So you've got big institutions that are coming in buying ten houses at a oh time. Oh my gosh! Oh you yeah. got Zillow that was buying houses, so they buy seven houses for three hundred thousand and then the last three they'd pay four hundred thousand for which increased the value of all of them mm -hmm. and then you got mom and pops now that have been scarred in real estate or the i mean the stock market because they they didn't have, they, they didn't know what they were doing mm -hmm. or you had um interest rates that have gone down to the point and people look in the most recent past it's called hindsight bias and they mm -hmm. extrapolate that in the future and they're like real estate's the answer for everything and you would not believe not the level of conviction that people have that real estate's the answer for everything. So you've got all this money they're scooping up these houses that 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 I think is going to pay a painful price for that in the long run. Mm -hmm. Now I don't mm -hmm. think prices are necessarily going to collapse, but but you know taxes, um, insurance, government regulations if inflation's really bad. Mm -hmm. there, there's no one asset class that is the answer to everything. It's the answer in a short period of time, mm -hmm. but by the time everybody thinks that's the answer, all of the profitability is sucked out with all of the risk. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I got to looking at, it, just to replace the roof on the house that we had before, that we sold, which was gonna have to, Huh? Twenty thousand? More than that. Thirty. I saw actually somebody who just paid thirty for one. Actually a little more than that. Oh my god. And I was like I was like telling Holly, I'm like, look, we're we I don't I mean maybe we do. I don't even care if we hit these prices, but we want more land. We want another place. This this doesn't fit without pouring huge amounts of money into it. Let's pull the parachute. Yeah. I mean, it, it. it just makes sense. And you did it. And, you did it. And now we have a place that we can, you know, if our kids want to come back, we, we have the opportunity. I don't know that that's going to happen, but it would be a nice thing if we could. It would be. 
Well, I just looked at the clock. I can see the clock from here now. And I want to end today. I have some medical deals to go next week. Please say a quick prayer. Monday, I'm having something done. I uh, won't be able to drive for a little bit, which is weird because you can't take my driving ability. I go crazy. And then Wednesday, have another biopsy. So I've got some things going on, and I need to hear some positive, funky music. So we're going to end today <laughs> with Southern Lights. This is a song that reminds me of my 66 Chevelle. It reminds me of cruising from here to Fannin County, or cruising the Tasty Freeze. Just reminds oh, me of being young, times. being healthy, and feeling good. So we're going to end today with some great music by your local, your local uh, songwriter, crazy producer, and wild man, uh, Dwight Sanford. So here we go. Um, Paul will be back with me next month. I will be back next Thursday after everything's done to me, and I'll see you again soon. Only on ETC. <laughs> I feel good, I got my best jeans on, I feel fine, I'll call my baby on the phone, we're going down to Janie's, and watch them shoot a game of nine, Jackie Dunn will be there, in his rag top 59. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you?
United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it for all your insurance.